Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Well, Joseph Parker has become the latest to turn down an IBF final eliminator against Philip Hergovic. Dan Raphael reporting per team Philip Hergovic. Joe Parker has also passed on the IBF eliminator for number one and mandatory hashtag boxing. And for me, I think this is actually even more disappointing than the Luis Ortiz, Philip Hergovic uh, potential final eliminator falling over. For the simple fact, Joseph Parker is with the same promoter, fights on the same network. There's actually less barriers to a fight between these two being made. So it can only be for one of two options, really, in my mind, why Joseph Parker has turned this down. One not enough money and i spoke about in the video about ortiz turning it down with it going to parker i could see that parker not taking it one because of the money just because his career has been all about risk and reward weighing that up making sure that as he goes through the heavyweight division he's well remunerated and a philip hergovich final eliminator probably has more risk and less dollars than they would like so I would absolutely 100% think it's most likely for this, although Joseph Parker and his management, David Higgins, haven't commented publicly on it, but I'm sure they will at some point. The other thing that could be a possibility is all of a sudden an injury comes out of the woodwork, we can't take it because we're rehabbing X, Y, or Z. After the news that Luis Ortiz declined the eliminator, all of a sudden a so-called hand injury came out. Very convenient when that sort of thing happens. But in my mind, for Parker, given the trajectory of his career, how it's gone, the money that they have asked for for certain fights and just chasing money effectively most of the time, it will be because of money. And I would remind people, a lot of people, Parker's been saying he wants another heavyweight title shot. And this would guarantee him a direct shot at the IBF champion at some point and the IBF don't muck around remembering the WBO's just had its mandatory if someone continues to hold those three belts a title shot would be within about a year and that's probably better than a lot of other scenarios that are out there because if Joseph Parker continues to go the WBO route which is possible because he's ranked number two that title shot if um Usuk or Joshua, whoever has the titles at the time, and that's not to say they don't fragment, but you know, say for example, if one of them keeps the titles, the WBO mandatory just happened. So that would be after the IBF mandatory. So I think potentially we could end up hearing a story that Joseph Parker wants to continue going down the WBO route, etc. But ultimately, I think the IBF title shot is going to happen before that. But a lot of these guys talk about legacy, wanting title fights, wanting to be the best, prove themselves. But there's always an asterisk because the unsaid thing is, but the money's got to be right. The money's got to be there. It's got to be for a boatload of money for me to take the risk against the guy. And that's, that's part of the heavyweight division. It's often a business first, sport second. And can be easy to forget that and guaranteed the economics of it all have played into this decision by team parker although it may be sort of played off with uh, joseph parker's uh, got an injury of sorts but i would say though and i did actually post this on on twitter this naming and shaming of those that are turning down the final eliminator with philip hergovich this is turning out to be some of the best PR for Hergovic that he could have hoped for. I don't know why they haven't done this properly before, because we heard from Hearn a number of months ago, well, the whole top 15's turned Hergovic down, they didn't want the fight. But after the win by Ortiz over Martin, going from Ortiz to Parker, doing it all very publicly, and they'll just keep going down the list, this is great PR for Philip Hergovich, and it makes some of these guys that are turning it down look a little bit foolish. And some of these, oh, he's injured, or oh, he doesn't want to take it for the money. It comes off as excuses. And no doubt, if there's injuries involved, I mean, we probably won't see any real evidence of it. As it is, the Ortiz camp is saying, effectively, this um, fracture that he's got in his hand is very minor, but they want to keep him out and don't risk him, etc. So to me, I mean, the timing of that sounds deeply suspicious, given he's just turned down a direct shot at a title after saying he'll fight anyone who's in line for a title. 
And with Parker, he's made similar sentiment, similar statements about wanting to fight for a title. But all these guys, it's often about money as well. And it's easy to forget that. But um, in terms of Joseph Parker, he's ranked number two with the WBO. With the WBC, he's ranked number four. So there are other avenues. And if he's turned this down, and it is purely for money, he probably gets dropped from the IBF rankings. Um, and in, in terms of Luis Ortiz, who was at number 10, and this is prior to the Charles Martin fight, and the rankings have not been updated, he'll have to prove to the IBF that he was legitimately injured. Otherwise, he will also serve similarly be dropped. Remembering um, Dillian White, when he turned down that um, IBF final eliminator in 2018, he was dropped by the IBF, has not been cited since in the IBF rankings. So who's next? What's next? This is the rankings. So the next cab off the rank, it's not going to be Anthony Joshua because he's obviously contractually you know, tied in to fight Alexander Usyk in a rematch. You've got Tony Yoko who does have a contract with Martin Bacoli. Their fight got pushed back because of COVID restrictions, you know, limited the crowd, so they've postponed it to a later date. Will that go ahead? Will it go to Yoka? Will he still be tied in with a Bacoli fight? Or will it then drop to Joe Joyce, who himself at the moment, and this is well before any of this, had declared in uh, late December he was injured and his fight was going to, next fight was going to be delayed, the announcement of it. Ajit Kabiel, well, Kabiel fights once a year. It's unlikely he's going to take it. I mean, it's just a fact. Murat Gassiev can't seem to stay un, um, healthy, always injured. Is he going to take it? You start dropping down here. Ruiz has already reportedly previously turned it down. So you start getting to Dempsey McKean, Zhang Gillet. Zhang has already said he'd take it, that he wants the IBF final eliminator. And in the context of Philip Hergovich's career, Zhang shapes as a step up, a guy that has got decent power, decent skills, certainly a cut above where he has been facing. So it could be a good stepping stone fight for Hergovich, because remembering, he's only got, what, about 14 fights or so on his ledger. He's a bit underdone with some of the seasoning that he needs. And one of the questions that we're going to have into some sort of title fight that if he eventually gets there is, is he ready for it? Does he have the experience? because he hasn't been fed some of the opponents in the past couple of years you'd want him to face. So, Zhang, then Huey Fury and Martin Bacoli. And I noted um, Billy Nelson on social media has been trying to re-spin the narrative that Hergovich ducked Bacoli, even though Bacoli said he needed a tune-up and then we never heard anything about it after that. So make of that what you will. But maybe it will eventually get that far, but perhaps it could drop at Zhang, but hopefully someone like a Joyce or a Kabiel Gassiev uh, even Ruiz would take it, but I think Ruiz, they'll keep it in-house at PBC. We're going to see that, but um, disappointing news nonetheless, and Joseph Parker, the latest to decline the opportunity. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.